Okay, so I've, uh, I've printed all the parts. Uh, the kit had two options. One, you can print your own parts, or uh, two, have them ship them. And I thought, you know, as long as I've got the printer and all that, uh, there are a couple cool things on this. There's this this piece that that's going to that the fan is going to attach to, and you can kind of see how it, it's going to make like a, a an air funnel. But the way they have this broken down is into uh, three different parts for this, uh, so that everything uh, is is a uh, concave facing up, so you don't end up with a bunch of jaggly stuff from printing the the top side of that circular piece. So it was a, it was a nice idea the way they broke out all those pieces. This is a really important note in the instructions. Uh, it looks like um, bear consumption is really important. And I'm a little bit worried because my kit did not come with a new bag of gummy bears. So I might have to go out and get some of those or just you know substitute it with something else. So here's the instructions. There's a link to how to get there. Uh, get yourself ready with some cat repellent and uh, dive in. So here's the first link uh, right there and uh, we're going to the how-to guide uh, looks like step-by-step -step instructions it should be pretty easy step one uh, looks like I need to remove some cables and uh, there's a lot of cables in there Have you even seen the size of my fingers this is gonna get rough right the next step is removing the head uh, does this look like anything out of a uh, matrix to anybody don't worry, it won't hurt when I pull this out of your head. Got it unpeeled and all the screws taken out the back, so uh, I'll flip around and take out the fans. You ever really start taking something apart and start to think to yourself, did I really want to take it this far apart? Because this is going to take forever to put back together again. I started to think to myself, you know, there's got to be a better way. Because uh, all that twisting in the little Allen key, that's just way too much work. So I uh, went to the shop, found one of about 400 Allen keys about the same size, whacked the end off, and this is going a lot better now. Highly recommend uh, whacking off the end of an Allen key and sticking it in your drill if you're going to do this project. Okay, you know how like in the picture it shows what something's looked like? Well this goobered up mass <laughs> That's the end of my hot end, and uh, I think that's going to need some cleaning before we put it back together again. Oh boy, I've done it now. I've got the whole thing disassembled, and uh, now I'm going to try and put it all back together again. Uh, step three, note, very difficult. Suggested time, not sure. <laughs> all right, so uh, got all the parts ready, and... Uh, I'm kind of psyched about this rebuild. There's just an awful lot of parts, though. I don't quite understand how this is all going to work, but there are two magnets repelling each other, and they uh, bump on that little bearing that's in there. So this is going to have an, an interesting mechanism, and it's involved in uh, detecting filament when it runs out. This little thing right here is the new sensor board. So this whole complicated mess uh, for this one. So I'm kind of psyched about the way this is supposed to work. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's coming together pretty well so far. Okay, this is the fan shroud assembly and I believe it's printed in PLA. And I gotta tell you, some of these, getting some of these little uh, nuts in place, just about murder. They are very tiny to deal with. So just one little detail. Um, this is printed from Prusa and it looks like they're using their powder coated plates. You can see this really rough texture on the uh, plate surface. Uh, and that's compared to this really smooth surface from the PEI uh, plate that I printed my parts on. I, I think I like that PEI plate a lot better Almost back together again. Just a little bit further to go. All right, this is my favorite part here, getting the belt back on. Uh, it's a little bit tedious. You gotta get this 
lined up with those little teeth in that slot, maybe. <laughs> it came out so easily. So that's back in. And then you gotta loosen up everything. Make sure that's all. That's lined up on the gears and everything. I'm gonna put this back together. Right, I got all the tight weaving done to get all the cables wound through the, I don't know, whatever this hole is that has everything to have the cable guide. That's all set up. Just got to get a few more screws in and then connect it. And I think I need to do a firmware update after that. We'll see. Okay, so the last step here is tucking the uh, cables into the the textile sleeve. So I guess that's pretty easy. And then kind of the best part of the whole deal is when you come up to the end, you just dig in there and start clipping off all the cable tie ends. I'm sure there's a better tool for it, but a fingernail trimmer works really great. All right, just have to make the connections and we're all done. Okay, so uh, maybe I stayed up too late working on that last night, but uh, it was kind of fun. It's a good kit. And now I'm ready to start making the connections and uh, updating the firmware and doing some testing, so. All right, this is the part I've been a little bit worried about because, well, two things. One, I've got really big fingers and uh, the other, these parts are all really small. So I've See if I can get all these put back in place. All right, so this one plug for the sensor is really important. It's uh, got extra important all over it, and it says to put it in the lower row of that little section right there. Okay, in the instruction manual, it says there's a, a little spacer that's supposed to go in here too, and uh, looks like white goes on the left. Yep, double check for like the third time. White goes on the left, and this goes here on the bottom row. It says there's supposed to be a little spacer in the kit and uh, we're shipped with it. I don't, I don't know. That wasn't there. So uh, we'll just kind of run with that. And then we just have to jam all the wires back in the box somehow. Um, and uh, fasten the lid. All right. There we go. Now to do the pre-flight check. <sighs> okay, so I noticed something bad. I've got a really significant problem I've got to deal with. The wire to the heating element uh, broke. Ugh. That's going to be a pain. All right, so during the printer upgrade, I had a, a terrible thing happen. One of the leads broke off of this heating element. So I ordered uh, another one online from Amazon. Uh, it says it's for proof of printer. And uh, this is the new part I got. Now, it's not identical. It's, it's really close, but it's not identical. The Prusa part is about, uh, let's look at that. The Prusa part is about 21 and a half millimeters long, and this new part is 20 millimeters long. Uh, the Prusa part, I think it's a higher quality part. The stainless steel and the finish looks better on it. Also the roundness, um, the, the new part is six millimeters, kind of on average round. 
um, but it fit in the hole. And the old part was six millimeters, six millimeters around uh, pretty much exactly. The end of the new part uh, is some sort of weird dimple, like maybe it's filled with something. And the end of the original Prusa part um, looks like it's just like a solid end or something like that. So anyway, so I, I did the repair and I swapped out the probes and I don't think I broke anything else. And the new one works. Uh, it comes up to temperature and holds temperature. Um, but just in case, I've got uh, two more. It was a three pack. You know, I, I really would have preferred to order it directly from Prusa, but uh, that uh, it's going to take a while with them. So uh, I just ordered this knockoff copy and got it in a couple days. Okay, so I uh, had to replace that heating element, so that's done. Uh, all the calibrations are finished, and the whole upgrade is finished, and it looks like it's working great on this test pattern. So, uh, happy as a clam. Um, I'm about ready to find out what happens when the filament runs out, because uh, this is just about done. Alright, so the printer's out of filament. It has no clue. I don't think this extruder upgrade actually works. Okay, so we uh, finally stopped and I've got this message to press the knob and unload the filament. So I'll press the knob. And uh, nothing happens. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm gonna call this So uh, this is after the MK3S extruder upgrade. New trick. Oh, it's not going to print. It says, press knob to unload the filament. Okay, unload the filament. And press the button. Yes, it was successful. Insert the filament. Okay, insert the filament. It says loading, please wait. And we got filament squirting out the bottom. Was it done right? Yep. Okay. Now it should start printing, right? not printing. Let's do that again. So I'm trying to do some diagnostics on the sensor. It's not detecting a load, so I'm just going to put something in the way of the sensors, such like a hotel card key. Um, and there's no change uh, in the support menu, so it's it's not detecting anything going in the way. So I'm pretty sure the sensor isn't working. Another part of the troubleshooting is just the mechanical end of it, and this is looking at the top end of the extruder. You can see when I pull this out, a little bit moves out of the way. So my mechanical part is working just fine. It's just the sensor isn't able to get it. Okay, so I finally figured out <laughs> what was going on and why my sensor wasn't working. Um, this is where you plug in um, the sensor probe kind of here in this in the middle of this giant kind of I really tried for wire management but it's a rat's nest anyway um, if you are say like maybe off by one pin uh, that sensor just won't work at all so now I'm plugged in auto load works and I'm pretty psyched to get printing again okay this is a final test of the auto load so I'm just gonna put this in here 
and it clicks and it starts to feed away, sucking it into the machine. Uh, now it's just to hit the knob. So I'm going to hit the knob and it's going to finish auto loading. And look, there's goo squirting out the bottom. Yay! All right, so that's successful. We've got a, a complete uh, extruder again. There were some parts of this project that were a little bit frustrating, and uh, you know, parts break and you know, troubleshooting whatever. But uh, in, in the end, it works, and I'm pretty happy with it. Plus, I have to give a huge shout out to Philip at Prusa Research. Uh, that dude's awesome. He sent me a couple of really key links to help really help with troubleshooting. Um, so got me back up and running. And that's like the number one reason you should buy a Prusa printer is because you can get support from people who really know what they're doing. So, you know, Prusa's awesome. <laughs>